Mr. Liu. Thank you, Chairman Nadler, and thank you, Director Ray, for your lengthy public service and to all their personnel at the FBI for keeping Americans safe. Earlier at this hearing, it was brought up that COVID-19 uh, could be a bioweapon. So before I ask you any questions, I just wanna make a public service announcement. If you're watching this and you believe COVID-19 is a bioweapon, you can protect yourself. Go get vaccinated. If you're fully vaccinated, then COVID-19 largely cannot harm you. Please consult your doctor if you have any questions. So Director Ray, I'd like to follow up on the questions by Congress Member Zoe Lofgren, uh, Congress Member Issa, as well as Congresswoman Sparts on Section 702 of FISA and the database. As Congresswoman Sparts mentioned, we wrote a letter to you about how the FBI got access to private information of Americans without a warrant from this database. I appreciate your response back where you implement a number of procedures to mitigate this from happening in the future. What I'd like to know is if in the future the FBI either accidentally or intentionally gets this information from the foreign surveillance database without a warrant, do you segment that information so that if it's ever used in a court of law, uh, the defendant can uh, challenge it and, and challenge how it may have influenced your investigation? Um. I think the answer. I think the answer is yes, but I prefer to make sure that I have people follow up with you to make sure that we're giving you the technically precise answer to that question. I appreciate if you could do that. Thank you. Uh, my next question goes to January 6th insurrection and what it was based on. I appreciate that you earlier had stated that you investigated alleged voter fraud and you cannot find any fraud sufficient to overturn the results of the election. In these five or so arrests of the individuals that attacked our Capitol, it's true, isn't it, that a number of them went to the Capitol to stop the Electoral College from being certified based on the big lie that the election was stolen. In other words, they were there not because they were upset about corporate tax rates, but because they believe the election was stolen. Is that correct? Well, certainly uh, a, some portion of the individuals that we arrested, uh, have arrested so far, were individuals whose intention was to interfere with or obstruct the operation of, um, of Congress's constitutional responsibilities here. And our constitutional responsibility on that day on January 6th was to get the election results in the Electoral College, correct? Yes. hackers have done. It seems like in the 21st century that these cyber attacks are only going to increase. Uh, would you agree, Director Ray, that we're likely going to see an increase in cyber attacks against both the public and private sector? Uh, yes, we think the cyber threat is increasing uh, almost exponentially. Uh, I mean, ransomware alone, the total volume of amounts paid uh, and ransomware, I think, has tripled over the last year. We're investigating, I think, 100 different ransomware variants, and each one of those 100 has dozens, if not hundreds, of victims. And that's just ransomware. That's just ransomware. We obviously are investigating scores and scores and scores of nation-state intrusions and other kinds of cyber criminal attacks. So the scale of this uh, is something that I don't think this country's ever really ever seen anything quite like it, and it's going to get much worse. private sector. Uh, that's why I've introduced legislation to provide incentives for people to go into the cybersecurity field. We're simply going to need more of these cyber workers in order to protect uh, Americans in the future. Now, some of these hacker groups appear to uh, either be in Russia or operate with either um, the complicity of Russia or directly at the behest of Russia. Uh, would you agree that there is some state action involvement in uh, some of these hacker groups? Well, it, of course, varies from intrusion to intrusion. We know the Russians have a very active, clearly state-sponsored uh, 
cyber campaign, including things like the uh, solar winds intrusion, which we have now publicly attributed to the SVR. Uh, in the past, there have been um, other indictments where we've brought against other members of the Russian intelligence services. Separate from that, there are, of course, cyber criminal act actors, any number of whom operate, uh, quite, a, quite a number of whom operate on Russian soil. The, the degree of nexus between those cyber criminals and the Russian government is not something I can discuss in an open hearing. But I will say that the, um, the most recent actors, the so-called uh, dark side actors involved in the colonial pipeline attack, uh, are individuals who, um, perhaps not coincidentally, specifically target English-speaking victims. The gentleman's time has expired. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm a you know, huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated, he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. 
When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.